I apologize about having to disguise my appearance. When I release this information to the world, I do not want to be found by the authorities. What are you doing? I thought you were down here to take out the garbage. Yeah, I just got, I had to thing with the... Uh... We have fun. Okay, so before you get too worked up about everything, you know, this is not hacking. This is not cracking. I'm not net sec info sex, sex, sex. I'm none of that. Uh, you know, it's, it is a hack, but like in the truest sense of the word. It's just a silly little thing you can do, but it's kind of cool, you know, whatever. I mean, I could have called it uh, how to circumvent a Cisco router ACL. But uh, you'd have to get a dictionary. Uh, we we'll have time. So this is how to connect. I'm going to show you how to connect to a server that's um, protected behind a Cisco router ACL. And you do need to have you know have set up the server ahead of time, uh, which I will show you how. So let's get started. So here's a use case. You have a file server in your dorm room and you left an updated file on it that you need in class while you're on your laptop. The university uses an ACL to block incoming connections to the dorm network, but you saw my video and you can connect to your server. Okay, let's say the ACL for the dorm network looks like this. This allows ICMP in and it says permit TCP any any established. Now, what does that mean? So your computer in your dorm network is allowed to connect to, you know, servers, computers outside of its network. Like, let's say you want to go to Google. Well, we have to allow the traffic from Google, Google to come back in and talk to you. See, the ACL is not stateful at all. It doesn't keep track of connections or state. Therefore, stateful, that's what it's not. It's not a firewall. It's just looking at individual packets and deciding, should I let this one in or should I not? So the established keyword is how return traffic is let in. But this is also the thing that we're going to take advantage of. See, all the established keyword does is check for the send flag. If it's set without the act flag, then the packet gets dropped. All other packets will get through. Let's see. Send flag, act flag, TCP flags, you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, okay, okay, hold on. So this is a TCP header, slightly outdated, but TCP header. Now these are the TCP flags. So the send or synchronize flag should only be set during the TCP handshake or the you know connection initiation. So for us, send flag only, get your ass out of here. Send and act flag set, why come right in? So how do we know this? Well, we're gonna fire up HPing. HPing is a nice little packet crafting utility that we're gonna play around with. So let me show you the network setup. It's real simple. We've got my Mac connecting into this uh, virtual GNS3 environment, going through this router to a FreeBSD machine. So we come in down here, follow this path there. Whoops. Whoa. Uh, real simple. Yeah, so if you recall the, the access list for the router, we allow ICMP, we allow TCP established, which we have talked about, and deny TCP anything else. So here on the left, I've got my uh, Mac, a shell on my Mac, shell on the FreeBSD. So over here, we're gonna do a TCP dump for let's say port 80. Yep. Uh, over here, I'm going to use hping. I'm going to set the send flag. I'm going to send it to port 80 to the IP address of the BSD machine. Let's see what happens. Filtered. So it is prohibited, which we suspected because the established keyword will not let just a send flag, right? Right. Let's add the act flag and see what happens. Oh. There we go, look, see, over here, it's getting through. So what else can we do? Let's try just the act flag. 
also getting through. We can do reset. Getting through. How about if that got through, then probably reset Aquil. Let's try Finn. Oh, denied. So the established keyword will also drop Finn packets. Interesting. How about Finac? That one gets through. So with HPing, you can quickly um, sort of map out how the established keyword works. Now, given this information, so you know, how am I going to connect to a server without a send flag? Well, the answer is divert sockets. So what happens when an application wants to connect to a service on a remote machine, like a web browser wants to connect to a web server? The application says, hey, TCP, go connect to that remote server for me. I got, I got something I need. TCP will send a packet with a send flag set. The host firewall, if it's enabled, will allow it or not. It'll hit the wire, go across to the server. See, what I've got to do is get my little claws in that packet somewhere between the client TCP sending it and it hitting the wire. And this, my friends, is where divert sockets and the host firewall come into play. So divert sockets allow me to match traffic with a rule in the firewall and divert it to a process running on the local machine. Now, what I need to do is match traffic going to the server that I care about and divert it to my program. And then this program can alter the packet and put it back in the flow however I want. So I can look for send packets going to my server and alter it in some way. And this is where you have to have control of the remote machine as well. So I'll use the same trick for incoming traffic over there and revert the change I made so that by the time TCP gets a packet, the send flag is set again. <laughs> See what I did? All right, enough chit chat. Let's do this. So I'm going to use a Perl script to do the dirty work on this. I use Perl because I'm familiar with it um, and it's easier for me. But you can use anything you want as long as it supports divert sockets. So you can for sure use C. You can probably use Python. You can probably use a lot of things just as long as it supports divert sockets. So let me show you the script that I'm going to use. Um, I'm not going to go through every single little detail. But I'll try to go through the main points. So right off, we're going to use the net divert socket. Got to use that. You have to install it. CPAN is your friend. We're also using the net packet modules. Uh, IP TCP specifically. So the first thing we do is create a divert object. And we're binding it to localhost and listening on port 45678. So this is where the firewall, when I put a rule in later, it will divert the traffic to localhost on port 45678, which is this script. So we call the, the routine git packets for every packet we get. So the first thing we're going to do is decode the packet into an IP object. Once we have the IP object, then we have access to the various IP header fields. So we're going to check the protocol field in the IP header and make sure it's TCP. So if it is TCP, then we'll continue. And then we'll decode the IP data into a TCP object. Remember, TCP is encapsulated by IP, you know, the TCP IP stack thing, right? You know it, sure, of course. So now that we have a TCP object, we have access to its header information. So we're going to check, and this is, this is the important part. We're going to check the TCP flags for SIN. If just the SIN flag is set, we're going to change the flags to reset ACK. So if TCP is initiating a connection, then we're going to unset the SIN flag and set reset and ACK. After we've made that change, we're going to reconstruct the packet with the changes we've made. That's what the next two lines do. After that, we have our packet with a change we made, and we send it out the door. Now, on the server side, it is almost identical. Now, can you think of the one change that it'll need? Hope so. If not, it's okay. I'm going to tell you. So instead of looking for a send flag, we're going to be looking for reset act flags. If those are set, 
then we're going to change it back to a send flag. Right? So the change we made on the change we made over here, we're undoing it on the server side. Change it back to a send, reconstruct the packet, send it out the door, it goes up to TCP, TCP gets a send flag, it never knew anything happened. Brilliant. So if you recall this little thing here, so the two divert pieces of this is the, those are the, the Perl scripts that are running. And I'm gonna, in a little while, show you the firewall changes you need to make to send the traffic to them. Let's see what happens when I try to, oh, I tried to get to the web server and I couldn't. You know what, let me do a capture and I'll show you what happens. I'm already started. So I'm gonna capture here on, uh, it's actually this interface over here, of the router interface. We're gonna capture with good old Wireshark. Let's do a filter on port 80. Now I'll do that again. Still failed, but now I'll show you why. Okay, so the client sent a send packet. The router said, nope, administratively filtered, which we expect. That's the whole point of the um, access list. So now we gotta get around this. And then we're about to do it. So I've already showed you the Perl script now. Let me show you the firewall piece. So the Mac uses IPFW. So we need to add a divert rule to 45678 TCP traffic from any, on any IP on my Mac to the FreeBSD machine on port 80 and in the out direction. Yeah, yeah. IPFW show, and there's our rule. Okay, so that takes care of the client traffic. Now on the server side, I've already got it in there, but you can see it basically is doing same type of function. We are diverting traffic to port 45678 on the local host, TCP traffic from any to any, destination port 80 in the in direction. Okay. We have pretty much arrived at the moment of truth. Let's run it on the server side. Let's run it on the client side. So now we're running the program. It's listening on port 45678. We're ready to go. Let's do this. Let's watch it work or not work. You know how these things go. Ta da! <laughs> I'm so proud. I'm so proud. So here's the output on the script. It received a send packet. It changed it to reset act. When the packet arrived on the server side with a reset act flag, it set it back to send. And we got through. We did it. Let's have a look at the let's have a look at the traffic. Stop this. So here's earlier the send and the destination unreachable. That's what we got um, earlier. Now that we made our changes, reset ACK, SYNAC, ACK. Now that doesn't look like a typical three-way handshake, does it? That's pretty cool. Then a GET, and then off we go. We're done. We did it. It's fantastic. We did it, guys. We're, we're total elite hack sores. Um. Now I have, just so you know, I have analyzed TCP sequence numbers disabled because this trips Wireshark up. So it's like, I don't know what's happening. Unseen segment. So I just turn it off just so it doesn't do that. Okay, well, um, that's it. We just connected to 
a server protected by a Cisco router ACL. Uh, you got any questions, comments? Let them fly. Go for it. I'm ready. Oh yeah, that's just me here talking by myself. Uh, but you can email me. Do that. Carry at packetbomb.com. Um, I would be happy to discuss packets with you. You know, I mean, I mean, this is. I think this is cool. If you don't think this is cool, I mean, why the hell did you watch this far? Go away. If you think it's cool, we probably could be friends. Just saying. Uh, yeah. So, what, 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 what kind of cool things do you want to see in terms of packet analysis? You know, this is more security focused, and I probably won't be doing a lot of that. I'll be mostly packet analysis and troubleshooting. So tell me what you want to see. What are you struggling with? How can I help? I'm here to help. Um, yeah, so, and when I do get a website, and don't really have one right now, um, you can leave comments there. Um, you can leave a comment on YouTube. I'll probably just ignore it, because it's YouTube. And, ugh, YouTube comments. Okay, I'm gonna, squ I'm gonna quit rambling and and go away. So, um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, tell your mother I asked how she was doing, and I'll see you later.